Good morning, folks. 2017 Higher Chemistry Multiple Choice Past Paper Walkthrough. As ever, acoustic and uncut, so I haven't checked the answers. I will probably make my traditional two mistakes, which I certainly love making for advanced higher papers. Let's see if I can do the same here, or not. Ah, right. Polarity of bonds. I'm going to need, uh, actually, least polar. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need a data book for this. That's a good start, eh? Organisation. Okay, for our bond polarity, we need the Pauling scale. Uh, which tells us the electronegativity of a particular element. And I've lost which page that's on. <laughs> um, and I found it. It's on page 12 of our data book. Beside ionis ionization energies, of course it is, because they sort of go uh, hand in hand with the patterns. Right, so electronegativity of carbon is 2.6. So we're looking for the halogen which is closest to 2.6 because that will give us the least polar bond. No, carbon's not 2.6. Get your specs on, silly old fool. Yeah, it is. Oh, I know why it's not. Um, I'm thinking that's not right because for many years it was 2.5. And 20... Which year is this data book? 2021. You may find 2.5 if you're using an older data book. The SQA decided to update their data book and change some minor electronegativity values. So 2.6 for carbon. Let's find it. It's not going to be that one. That's for damn sure because fluorine is the most electronegative on the board. I'm going to try iodine. I'm going to pause this. There's no point in hearing me mumbling about it. There we go. The wonder of the pause button. The answer, of course, is A because iodine is 2.7. It's closer to 2.6. Which of the following compounds would be the most water soluble? So we're looking for ones that are most polar or contain the most OH groups. Well, we can scratch that one. That is for sure. There's nothing in that one that would help it dissolve in water. This one here, I'm seeing an OH group. One, that's not bad. That's the best we've got so far. Nothing in that one either. Oh, and then we get to this one, which I find has multiple OH groups. The answer is going to be D. Number three, which of the following atoms has the greatest attraction for bonding electrons? Another electronegativity question. That's not very original SQA. I'm going to call you out on that one. Okay. Um, in other words, the def this is the definition of electronegativity. So I'm going to go with that one in gut value. I'm going to pause the video again and I'll just pointlessly check it. Donkey work, SQA. Donkey work. Yep, I was right. It's nitrogen. Which type of structure is found in phosphorus? This is a very simple KU question. It is covalent molecules. If you want a bit more detail, go and have a look at my video. They actually go about in little of fours, groups of four, tetrahedrons. Number five, polarity of molecules can be investigated using a charged rod. The charged rod will attract a stream of polar liquid flowing from a burette. Um, which of the fun liquids would not be attracted? Okay, so which is non-polar? That's what we're looking for, non-polar liquid. Well, it's definitely not water, that's for sure. These all have oxygen in them, which would imply that there is a decent electronegativity difference, although you can't rely purely on that. For example, carbon dioxide has a decent electronegative difference, but because it's completely symmetrical, it is non-polar. Um, however, whenever you see an alkane, then C and H have as close, uh, that's 2.6 now, and 2.2. It's not really a big enough delta En to be considered polar, so therefore that's the answer. Look for the alkanes or hydrocarbons, they are non-polar. One like this, I came across one like this just the other week, and I asked for maths genii to leave me a comment. Um, is there a mathematical way to solve this? I was quite good at maths, I just found it a bit boring. So what I'm going to do is substitute in these numbers here and see which one works. There's no point in watching me do that, so once again, the pause number. So what I'm going to do is just literally run through each of these answers, pop the numbers into here, and see if it all balances out. And it turns out the answer is C. What is the systematic name? Are we on camera? Yes, we are. Uh, this compound here, well, basically, it's propanol. Technically speaking, it's propanol. Does that help us? Yes, it does. We can chuck out that, and we can chuck out that. And there are two methyl branches. They're both on the second carbon, so it's 2, 2. Oh, sorry. Chuck out that one as well. Oh, that's an easy one. It's just that. Uh, number 8, which you can't see. Now you can. 
uh, which of the following fatty acids is the most unsaturated? In other words, has the most number of double bonds. And what you're looking for here is the least number of hydrogens. Because if you think about it, here is part of the chain. It used to have four hydrogens on it. And every time you add a double bond into the chain, you have to scrub a pair of hydrogens. So we're looking for the least number of hydrogens in proportion to the number of carbons, that is. Because I see they've actually changed the number of carbons. That's annoying. Um, so C15H31, that has no double bonds. Chuck that one out. C17H30, oh, sorry. CNH2N plus one. Two fifteen yeah. Uh, that's, chuck that one out for the same reason. Um, 217, so what I'm doing here is CNH, and I'm working out how many you've got H's you've got in proportion to the N's here. 217s plus 2 should be um, 30 plus 1, actually. 2N plus 1, because the other bond goes onto the carbon, sorry. Um, 35, so I've lost... Um, I'm going to point out that, yeah, it's that one. That's got the fewest hydrogens in proportion to the number of carbons. Uh, right, let's move on. Number 9 which the following is not a step in free radical reactions. So, initiation, propagation, termination, that's easy. Number 10, which the following is an isomer of ethyl propanoate? An ester question. Um, is there a shortcut here? Yes, possibly, because one, two, three, four, five, there's five carbons. Um, one here and three here. Nope. Five, five, five. Uh, you also have to have two two oxygens, so there are only one oxygen in that. There's two oxygens in these. Okay, um, let's do this. So we've got C5, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 10, C5, H, 10, O, 2. That's the formula for the propanoate. Pentanoic acid, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, double bond, O, O, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to call it as pentanoic acid. In a real exam, I'd come back and just check that it's not the dial. Essential oils are... Simple KU question here. This is an odd multiple choice. It's varying so far between simple KU and a data book treasure hunt. Strange questions. Not much in the way of problem solving. Um, they're non-water soluble volatile compounds. Because they're all oils. Close and, and they smell nice. That's why they're volatile. They evaporate so you can smell them. 12 and 13. Enthalpy of combustion of a hydrocarbon is the enthalpy change when? So it's definition time. It's when you burn one mole of a hydrocarbon completely um, in oxygen. So it's C. The rest are all jiggling around the definitions and they're all wrong. Number 13, which of the following is the strongest at reducing agent? Data book. Bra is at the top right. Bra and Boa. Guys, uh, go and watch my Redox uh, video on this and you'll see what I'm raving about. Sounds very bad out of context, but it's not. Best reducing agent, top right. So, um, definitely not that one. And that's the bottom left. Um, lithium, I'm t yeah, it's lithium. Top right. Another data book treasure hunt. What a strange bunch of questions. Number 14, atom economy is defined as the total mass of what you're looking for. Uh, so what are we looking for? Titanium. Uh, that's one titanium. That's total mass of desired products um, over total mass of reactants. So um, we can check out these two. Which leaves us with, it's defined as the mass of desired product, which is titanium, divided by the total mass of reactants. So there's one TICO, and they've given you the GFM, which is nice. But of course, there's a reason they've given you that, because they're almost trying to sneak you into this answer here, and that's why it's the first answer. Of course it is. Look, isn't that the total mass of our desired react? Uh, sorry, total mass of our reactants? No, it's not, because you need two magnesiums. So it's B. Now, number 15. The vitamin C content was determined by four uh, students three times. Reproducible. Uh, definition of reproducible. I need to bring my dartboard in so we can uh, see. 
That's not the word they use, interestingly, at advanced hire. Um, the word they use there is precision, but that's okay. Let's go with this. So what we got, uh, the most reproducible uh, were produced by student. Uh, we're looking for results that are similar to each other, basically, and dithering here. So that's a centimetre cubed out, that's horrendous. Uh, that's 0.4, that's a range of 0.4. That's a range of 0.1, yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. And that's a range of 0.4, yeah, C. Student C, number 16. Doesn't fit on the page in one shot. That's okay, let's have a look. Cyanohydrin compounds, never heard of them. Must be problem solving organic. This is a bit more like it. Can be made from carbonyl compounds by reacting the carbonyl compound with HCN. Yummy. Can you smell the almonds? Although I'll maybe put a link to Nile Red up here um, where he actually goes to see if cyanide does smell like almonds. Please don't try that one at home, okay? Please don't go sniffing cyanide at home. That's a bad, bad plan. Back to the question, hey. Um, what's going on here, then? If we've never seen this reaction, what you have to try and work out is which bonds have been broken, which atoms have been added. I'm still seeing three carbons here, three carbons here. I'm seeing a cyanide, cyano, actually, group on there. Um, and I'm seeing that oxygen, which presumably there was that oxygen, and now it's got a hydrogen attached to it. That'll be the HCN, that's where it's gone. The H has gone on to here, and the cyanao, cyanao group has gone on to there. Jolly good. Which carbonyl compound would react with hydrogen cyanide to form the following? So, yeah, we're going backwards. So we're ripping off HCN to make this. So that is your product. So if we have a look, there's the CN there. There's the H. So if we delete them, like going that way, then we end up with that, which of course would have a double bond. So what does that match up to? Just A. That's simple. For a change, I expected that to be the last answer. It's A. It's because it's quite a tricky problem solving, that one, that, and that's why I've left it relatively straightforward. Here's me bad mouthing them as well. 17. Chemical reactions are in a state of dynamic equilibrium. Definition of equilibrium. The reaction involves no enthalpy change. Every reaction's got an enthalpy change, so that's rubbish. Concentrations of reactants and products are equal. That is a trap answer. It's not the concentrations that have to be equal. It's the rate of the forward and the backward reaction that has to be equal. Concentrations can be any ratio you like at equilibrium. The activation energies of the forward and backward reactions are equal. Nope. Activation energies will always be different because the enthalpy change is always different. Go and watch the video if you're not sure on that one. And the rate of the forward reaction equals... The, yeah, there we go. It's the rates that are equal. Bromine and hydrogen react to form hydrogen bromide. They do indeed. Um, enthalpy change. So this is bond making... Bond breaking, rather, and bond making. Uh... I can't remember which video I've done this. Bond enthalpy calculations, I think. Um, I've got... I've, now that I've covered the whole course for higher, it's tricky to remember which is where. Go and, go and search. Go and search. Um, so what you need to do is we need to break a hydrogen bond and we need to break a bromine bond and then we need to assemble, on the other side, two HBr bonds. What you need to remember is that breaking is positive and assembling is negative, and then you just sum them together. So they've given you the bond enthalpies, which is nice. Oh, they've actually told you. Sorry. Have you even read the question? Hey, geez, that's been really dumbed down. So they're actually only expecting you to know that it's positive and negative. Okay. We can do that. Uh, let me go and get a calculator, work it out. Okay, so that's the calculation, guys, and that's the answer. 19. Which of the following formulas are... Again, just straightforward, know it. Just know your stuff, to quote Charlie Chambers from a few years back. Um, it's uh, that, propan123, trial. Number 20. Uh, the effect of adding a catalyst to this reaction here. Position of the equilibrium and rate of forward reaction. Well, a catalyst will accelerate a reaction. So um, we can scrub that and we can scrub that. Um, and the position of the equilibrium, however, is unchanged because it accelerates the reverse reaction as well. 
That seemed very straightforward. Famous last words. Now I'll do some marking and you get to see my mistakes. Or if I haven't made any mistakes, I get to say bye bye. Thank you for listening. Oh, one last thing. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, adverts on YouTube. Stop watching YouTube through your phone's built in browser because you can't put an ad blocker on it. Instead, download Firefox mobile. It's just a browser. Same as any other browser like Chrome or whatever, or Safari or whatever Apple uses these days. Um, download Firefox mobile and then you can put extensions onto it. Find an extension which is an ad blocker. Pop the ad blocker on to Firefox. Now watch YouTube as just a web page on your Firefox browser. Ta-da! No more adverts ever. Let me do some marking.